Good morning, folks. Got top science news related to space weather, climate science, and the Earth's disaster cycle. But the focus at the moment is on our star. Watching the last 24 hours on the sun, you can see two eruptions, bottom right and top left. Geomagnetic conditions are slightly disturbed due to the solar wind phi angle flip, but the faster coronal hole stream is yet to arrive. We had an M-class flare yesterday following a long-duration C-class flare, and we'll watch both of those more closely here. The first was resulting from a filament that erupted on the departing limb, the filament we had put on watch several days ago while it was facing Earth. It waited to erupt. The M flare erupted on the other side of the sun at the new active region on the north, and it also created a CME as the flare destabilized and released the plasma and the umbral magnetic field arcs above the sunspot. The coronagraphs show the two eruptions, with the first being denser as the released filament is not expanding much, while the second is faster, already eclipsing the breadth of the first. We'll continue to monitor the sunspot groups as there are several on the Earth-facing side of the sun at the moment. For now, most have their magnetism nicely split, but those change pretty quickly. First up in the articles is a mid-cycle prediction for the peak by the group that discovered the solar terminator the magnetic signal that one sunspot cycle is ending and the next is beginning. They still predict a very large peak to the cycle this round, peaking late next year and in 2024, and at the high levels they predict the eruptions on the sun will be more than twice as numerous and much larger than what we've seen the last several months. Not great news with Earth's weakening magnetic field. Poking a bit of fun at climate science up next, a phenomenal reduction in key pollutants has made the air cleaner and warmer. You won't hear this on mainstream, but this is probably the eighth or ninth time we've had to report this. Reduced pollution causes global warming since the particulate matter reflects sunlight back into space. Bit of eye candy here as a recurrent nova is in focus. This one has recently shed its outer layer into a gorgeous remnant and left the star still inside, like a phoenix who has the ability to go nova again someday. Good study here on how the Dansgaard Oshkar events hit differently in different parts of the world each time they occur. We are in the beginnings of one right now, by the way, with the melting polar ice. They usually reach 4 to 8 degrees of warming in as little as 40 years, which makes modern climate warming look like peanuts so far. And after these come the cold epochs, the Heinrich events, as is also about to happen again. Lastly, folks, great paper on why no activity at a major volcano can be taken lightly. Surges of magma can completely fill a chamber and erupt in a matter of months, whereas it was thought to take decades to centuries to millennia before. It can be very calm, and then all of a sudden, it's not. If you didn't catch our video last night, we needed to straighten out the experts after they stumbled over themselves on the ozone. Very much worth watching if you missed it. We greatly appreciate your support. At the Shopify link below the video, you can get our books on climate and major earth changes and more. And for the remainder of this month, everything is 20% off. Take advantage while you can. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.